If you've gotten this far, I really hope you're planning on publishing what you've built. The app that we have is really full featured and really fun to play with, and there's a social aspect as well. So in this segment, I wanna walk through a checklist of some of the things I always think about before publishing any app onto the Play Store. First is the app icon. So if we tap on the home button and then swipe up to open up the app launcher screen, you can see the app we have here is the default one. So of course, before publishing, we'll want to have a unique app icon for our app, My Memory. You can design the app icon yourself or use a design agency or something like Fiverr in order to get a high quality app icon. Here's what I came up with. It's a grid of nine squares of different colors to indicate that there's some sort of pairing or matching going on. The main thing to keep in mind with the app icon is that you want it to be square and you want to avoid text or anything which is too detailed in the image because users won't have that much time or the ability to see your app icon in high-res. So you want it to be very obvious at a glance what your app is. So once you have something you're happy with, then go into the drawable directory, go to new and tap on image asset. And this asset studio will help us to create all the different icons that we need, depending on the kind of phone that you have. So I'm gonna tap on path and we're gonna choose that icon that we had just created. So now you can see a preview of how this icon might look. So depending on the kind of phone, if you have a Samsung phone or a Google Pixel or something else, the icon might look a little different and this is all the different ways that it might be rendered. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So we're gonna leave it the layer name as IC Launcher Foreground, tap on next. And this is basically just saying that we're gonna override the default IC Launcher. So let's tap on finish. Great, and so now if we run the app, let's see if we actually have the app icon properly reflected. So I'm gonna exit the app and go here and you can see it does indeed show our new app icon. Awesome. So that's one thing you wanna do. The other is enabling minification and ProGuard. If you open up the build.gradle file, I can show you what I'm talking about. You should have a section in your app level build.gradle file for release and build types. And what this is saying is, what are the steps of the build process that you want to run on the release build. When you actually publish your app, you're going to be publishing a release build. What we've been doing so far is a debug build. By default, Android Studio is gonna have this minify enabled option as false in release builds. It's important that you turn this on to true. And the reason you wanna do this is because it will shrink the size of your app. So an app which might be 20 megabytes with minify enabled, it'll be much smaller than 20 megabytes. In my experience, the size savings can be more than 50%. And the reason app size is important is because users often don't have that much space on their phone. And also people may not have good connectivity. And so a large app may deter them from downloading it from Google Play. And just to demystify this a little bit, when you enable minification, what's happening is there's something called ProGuard. And ProGuard will basically look at all the libraries that your project is including and strip out methods that are not being used or not being referenced. And through that, it is a, it's a really nice way to get rid of code and resources which are not, are not referenced and reduce the size of your application or of the APK, which is generated at the end of the day, and that's downloaded onto the device. You do wanna be a little bit careful with ProGuard. Because it's stripping out methods, sometimes it's a little bit over eager and it may strip out something which you actually do need in your project. And so you wanna make sure that you test out your release build properly and make sure there are no issues that come up in the release build that don't happen on the debug build. For example, one thing I discovered after turning on minification is that I previously didn't have, in the user image list, I didn't have this property name images in the data class. And this actually worked fine in the debug build, but when making a release build, this caused a crash. And so I needed to explicitly add property name images in order for Firestore to be able to construct the user image list correctly. Tip number three is if you wanna understand better what your users are doing in the app once you publish it, I'd recommend that you integrate Firebase Analytics. And so there's a guide here that you can Google for, but this is a way for you to understand how many users are opening up the app, how many users are taking a particular action in the app, and you can define what that action might be. So that's an option that we're not gonna walk through here, but if you really want more detailed analytics about how people are behaving, then this is a good way to do that. One other thing that you wanna do for sure 
is test your app on different phones and different API versions. So right now, we've only tested our app on this Pixel 2 phone, which is running API 29. But you want to make sure that you test your phone on a tablet if you want to target tablets. You want to test it on the most recent API version, API 30, for example. You want to also go back five or six years and test your app out on a phone, which is running API maybe 24, 25, um, and make sure that everything works. Look in our build.gradle, and you can see the minimum SDK version is 21. So you probably want to test a phone running API 21 as well. We've only been testing our app right now on an emulator. It probably is also worth testing on a physical phone if you have one, just because that will give you a genuine experience of how real users will interact with your app. Emulators are great for testing out your phone on very old devices or devices that are physically hard to get a hold of, but it's definitely worthwhile to try out the app at least once on a physical phone. And the final tip I have is to translate your strings. Right now we have a bunch of text that we show to the users. Those are called strings, and these strings are all written in English. For example, here, snackbar.move, we, we say invalid move. And this is bad practice because if the user is changing the locale of their phone to let's say Spanish or Hindi or some other language, then we would want to be able to translate this text into that language. And the way you do this typically is by having all the user facing strings belong in this strings XML file. So right now we literally only have one string, which is the app name. But if you wanted to internationalize your app and have it be popular in countries that are not English speaking, then what you'll want to do is move all of these strings out into the XML file and then reference the strings of XML file instead of having hard-coded text. And once you have all the strings in an XML file like this, you can create an additional version of the strings XML for each language. So you'll have one strings XML for English, one for Spanish, one for French, one for Hindi, and so on. So th there are probably a bunch of other things that you could do to optimize your release and make sure it's successful. This is a very quick list of what I typically think about when I publish. If you have other ideas or other things on your checklist, I'd love to hear what you do. Let me know in the comments how you think about it. At this point, not only are we done with the debug version of the app, but also the release version, which is the optimized version of our app for publishing. In the next segment, we'll upload our release app to Google Play and create a listing for our app on the Play Store. If you found this helpful, hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss future updates. See you soon.